For right now, I am teaching uh, calculus and combinatorics. So the latter combinatorics, uh, that's my research area actually, so I'm having a lot of fun in that class. Um, so that is the, uh, some call it the art of counting. I'm going to be discussing the math of elections, uh, which is I think a really fun topic. Uh, I, I got interested because I was separately interested in math and politics and I uh, then discovered that there's this uh, nice interplay between it. Our current elections are run like this. Uh, you show up at the voting booth and the ballot asks you a question. Who do you most want to vote for? So you look at the list of candidates. Uh, in this election, there were four major candidates. And you would uh, check the box who you most prefer. And then from there, uh, you'd go home and just wait for the results, see who got the most first place votes. Uh, the idea, though, is that maybe that's not the best way to run an election. Maybe the ballot could ask for a little bit more information, and that would uh, better allow the system to figure out who best represents our democracy. If there are four candidates. Maybe you give uh, your top choice three points, your next choice two points, one point, and zero point, and you just add up all the points. See, this is a little bit better because uh, not only are you declaring, this is who I want a lot, but you, you're also declaring your second choice. And uh, additionally, if you really like a third party candidate, you don't feel like you're throwing away your vote because you're still able to award some points to your second choice. Suppose you really like the Libertarian or the Green Party candidate. You can still vote for them, but still declare a preference between, say, Clinton or Trump. 